We're going to continue learning how to modify objects by learning the trim and extend commands as well as the fillet and chamfer commands. Now if you haven't already done so, please type units and change into architectural units. I have already changed my units, so I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the trim command. Now trim is used when you have two objects that intersect each other, but you want to erase part of an object at that intersection. So think of it as getting a haircut at the salon. You know, usually the hairstylist holds your hair in between her two fingers and then trims off the part she doesn't want on one side of those fingers. Well, it's kind of the same concept in AutoCAD. So to demonstrate it, I'm going to draw two lines that intersect each other. There we go. And here we are, big X. Now trim is located on the modify panel of the home tab, or you can type trim if you want to. And usually I type trim, so if you see me doing the trim command, it's usually because I typed it. Now it's important to understand the behavior of this command. So when I activate the trim command, the cursor and the command bar are prompting me to select a line to trim from, not the line that is going to be trimmed. So CAD will continue to prompt you to choose lines or objects to trim until you tell it that you are done choosing objects by hitting enter on your keyboard. So I'll choose the line I want to trim from, see how it says select objects. Uh, it, CAD will continue to ask me to trim objects until I tell it I'm done selecting objects to trim from. So I'm going to hit enter and now it's saying select the object to trim. So I want to obviously the line that I did not select to be trimmed. I'm going to hover my mouse over and it temporarily ghosts that line. That's what I like to call it. It feels very paranormal that way, but it shows me what the command is trying to do by first temporarily ghosting it for me. And once I've selected which side that I want to delete, I just click on it and it automatically trims that side, just like a hairstylist, right? Well, I want to show you another method. Let's draw a very long line across the screen. And let's say that I like this line but I actually want the center of the line to be gone. I'm going to draw two temporary lines in the area that I want to have trimmed out. This is a really good method for trimming out doors and a wall when you are drawing floor plans. Now I want this area to be trimmed out, so I'm going to type trim. It says select all of your cutting objects. I'm going to select both of these, see how they're highlighted in blue? I'm going to hit enter because I'm done selecting my cutting objects and now I'm going to click on the center and that line is now gone and I can delete my two temporary lines. Now trim also works on other objects. Uh, let me show you. I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to draw a couple circles here and there. Circle, circle, oh well, that works. And I'll draw another circle right here. Now I could select individual circles or the rectangle depending on what I want to trim, but I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned working out in the field. So I'm going to type trim. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to type all and then enter. And what that did is it took every line or object that I drew and turned that into a cutting surface. And now I need to hit enter one more time. And now I can start cutting things out that I don't want. And I don't have to continually use that stupid trim every single time I wanted to cut one of those lines. I now have something like this. I'm going to come in here and trim that out. It can help me get really detailed with what I want to do and when I'm done I just hit enter and there are my shapes. Sometimes this method is the easiest one to work with because then you don't have to worry about what's a cutting surface or if you have a lot of things to cut. 
um, it just makes your life a lot easier to, to use. So go ahead and pause the video, practice using the trim command, trim two intersecting lines, trim intersecting shapes, draw a whole bunch of objects in complete chaos, something that would make Jackson Pollock cry with joy, and try the trim all method and really get the feel for how this command works. Now moving on, I'm going to demonstrate the extend command. And extend is located in the arrow right next to trim. So if you click on that arrow, you'll find the extend button. You can also type extend. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. And I'm going to draw a line here and a line here. So I have two lines. One of the lines looks like it's going to intersect the other line, but there is a bit of a gap right here. I can use the extend command and CAD will basically bridge the gap and connect the two lines together. So all I need to do is activate the extend command, select the object or objects I want to extend to first. So I want to extend to that line. Hit enter on the keyboard to tell CAD, hey, I'm done selecting the extend to objects. And now I can select the line and you'll see that it temporarily puts the extension in so I can see what it looks like and I can make sure that's what I want and if it is then I just simply click to make that extension permanent. Now there is no other line for me to extend to this line so I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and I'm out of the command. Remember that it's a big deal in CAD to always close your intersections. We know we don't want any gaps where gaps ought not to be. So in these situations, extend is going to be your friend. Ha! I'm a poet, and I didn't even know it. Okay, so now you have to be a little bit careful too when clicking on the line that you want to extend. Let me draw another line right here, just to kind of demonstrate this. This line looks like it can intersect this line and this line. So when I click extend, I am obviously need to do extend to, enter, select the object I want to extend. If I try to choose the line from the back of the line, it just doesn't work. CAD's like, that side of the line does not intersect with this line. So you have to kind of choose the end of the line that you want. That can come in handy when you really need uh, to figure out why CAD is not behaving the way you want it to. Make sure that you're always selecting at the end of the line you want to have extended and not the back side of it. Again, if I wanted to do extend in one command and extend to both of these lines, I can hit extend, select this object, and select this object as my extend to lines, hit enter, and now I can click here, and I can click here, and I have completed that task. Now there is an interesting little side note about the extend command. I'm going to erase these and I'm going to do something where we have a line here and we have a line here. It's obvious that these two lines will eventually intersect somewhere up here and you'll want to try and use the extend command to do that. To be like, hey, this is, you know, what this line will extend to. Let's do this. But CAD, for whatever reason, does not like that. So if you need to extend um, out into space, there's a different command I'm going to show you uh, at the end of the video that will help you do that easily, but for right now, extend does not work in those situations, so I wanted you to know about that. Now you can extend lines into other shapes, so for instance if I have a circle and I have a line that is eventually going to hit that circle, I can use the extend button, select the circle, hit enter, and it will extend to that object. However, you cannot extend a circle into something else. It's a closed object, therefore it's not extendable, if that makes sense. Rectangles, circles, you can do it with arcs, you can do it with lines, but unfortunately the closed shapes you're not able to extend. So pause the video, play around with the extend command a little, try some arcs try extending circles and rectangles if you so wish, but just get a feel for how the command works and how it doesn't work, and that way you'll understand its behavior a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and erase these objects and talk about the fillet and chamfer commands. Now if you have two lines, 
that are at a 90 degree angle from each other. But you want this corner uh, to be rounded instead of sharp. That's when you would use the fillet button. I've always called it the fillet button. I'm not sure if that's the proper term. I guess it could be fillet, but I like fillet. It sounds French and I like using accents when I work on cod anyways. So it works for me, but you can call it whatever you want. Just the fillet button is located in the ribbon or you can type fillet if you like to. So we'll activate the fillet command, but this is where fillet can get a little tricky. AutoCAD defaults the fillet command to round corners at a zero degree radius. Why? I don't know. It seems dumb, but we got to work with CAD and how it behaves, right? So we have to actually tell AutoCAD what radius we want to fillet our corner at. Otherwise, if I try to do a radius right now, it wouldn't do anything. So after you activate the fillet command, type R for radius, and you'll see that it was set at zero but I actually want the radius to be more like, let's say two inches. So I'm gonna hit two and enter. And now CAD is prompting me to select my first object. So I'm gonna select one of the lines. It doesn't matter which one at this point, this one. And then it says the second object and this one. And you'll notice before I even click, if I hover over it, it temporarily shows me what that radius is gonna look like. So if I need to change anything, I can do that before I hit enter. But if I like what that's doing, I'm going to go ahead and click and now I have a very nice rounded corner for that angle. Now if you're zoomed way out uh, or you're working with a really large sized lines, you might not necessarily see the change. So make sure that you're zoomed in tight to the corner. Let me demonstrate this again on two lines that are not at a 90 degree angle, maybe something a little more acute, something maybe a little more like this. So I basically want this corner to be rounded, right? So I'm going to start the fillet command and, oh, type R for radius. And let's say that we actually want the radius to be something more like 10 inches. I don't know. Let's try that. Let's see what happens. Select the first object and then the second object. Uh-oh. CAD's telling me that that was invalid. He says the fillet radius is too large. This means that the size of the radius we chose is just too big for this angle. So we're going to have to choose something smaller. So fillet again. Let's type R for radius and let's do 0.5 inches this time. So 0.5 is of course half inch uh, just in decimal form. Enter. Select the first object. Select the second object. Oh yes, that's, that's lovely right there. So you can choose a radius that is too big, but the worst that will happen is CAD will say that the radius is invalid and you just have to choose something smaller. Your computer is not going to blow up or anything like that, okay? So go ahead and practice fillet on corners. Practice using different angled lines. Practice sizes of radius to get the feel of how the fillet works and behaves. I also want you to try drawing a rectangle and use the fillet command on the rectangle. See what happens in that instance. Now I deleted the lines and we're going to go right into chamfer, which is very similar to fillet, but instead of rounding the corner, it creates a straight lined diagonal on the corner of the angle. Chamfer, you can also modify options on chamfer much more than you can on the fillet command. So let's draw a 90 degree angle again. Something like that. Right click, enter. Now here I could draw a diagonal line and then use the trim command to trim it off. Uh, but chamfering just is a little bit more proactive in doing what you want it to do. So we'll activate the chamfer command. It is located next to fillet in the arrow. Just select the chamfer or you can type chamfer if you want to. Now CAD again is prompting me to select the first line, but whoa, 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 whoa. This is kind of similar to fillet. AutoCAD automatically sets chamfer to zero. So if we try to chamfer this now, it's not going to work. And then you're going to get frustrated. And then you're going to throw your keyboard around and start cursing out AutoCAD, but there's no need to do that. We just have to tell CAD what we want the distance of the chamfer to be. So I want you to watch what I'm about to do for a second instead of trying to follow along in CAD on your own. It's really important for you to see how this behaves because it can be confusing. So after activating the chamfer command, type D for distance. And it says 
okay, what do you want your first chamfer distance to be? So right now I have one inch selected. And then it wants a second chamfer distance? What the heck does that mean? I don't know. Let's just do one inches again. Now CAD is saying, hey, select your first line. So I'm just going to click the top one and then select a second line. And if I hover my mouse over, you're going to see how it makes that angle on that corner right there. So what it actually did is, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, and I'm going to redraw this. Here we go. Right like that. That's what the angle used to look like, right? And then I told it to chamfer at a distance of one inches twice, right? So if I measure here, that's one inch and down one inch. So it's really important to understand that when it prompts you to give a distance for your first distance, whatever that distance is, is going to be what affects the first line that you choose. The second distance affects the second line that you choose. So let me demonstrate this one more time. I'm going to make these two come together. We're going to select chamfer. I'm going to select D for distance and this time I'm going to change it. I'm going to do two inches on the first distance and then I'm going to do 0.5 or half an inch on the second distance. This time I'm going to select this line as my first line and this will be my second line. Ah, see what it did there? Let me go back in here. Just to show you how this worked. This is how it was originally. This is how it chamfered that line. If I measure here is two inches, right? And here is half an inch. So whatever distance you tell chamfer to do, it's going to shrink that line back at, from the corner and will insert the diagonal in between the two points. Does that make sense? So your chamfer in the end should really look like that. The key is knowing that the first distance will shrink the first line you choose by that amount and the second distance will shrink the second line you choose by that amount. So pause the video, practice chamfer, switch numbers around, switch which line you choose first, but get to know how chamfer works and how it behaves. Now before I end the video, I want to show you a handy trick of the trade. In interior design, we deal with a lot of 90 degree corners. Most rooms are built at 90 degree angles, but usually there's some kind of angle happening in the rooms that we're drawing. I'm going to take out this chamfered line right here, and let's say that I drew a corner of a room that looks like this, but I need to connect these at a 90 degree angle. Remember, I can't use the extend command in this situation because it doesn't extend to open space. But strange enough, fillet does. So I'm going to go back up to the fillet command and I'm going to type R for radius and I'm going to type zero. I know. Zero? Really lady? Hit zero. Select the first object and then select the second object. Look what it does. It automatically connects those two together by clicking on it and making it permanent. Pretty cool, right? So anytime that you have any kind of angle that will connect into open space, remember I demonstrated something like this earlier, use your fillet, make sure the radius is set to zero, click and click and it will automatically generate the connect. So we have come to the end of our video, but you did get to learn how to trim lines and objects how to extend lines out, how to fillet rounded corners, as well as chamfer angled corners.